Greetings, Lotus Seedlings and Sprouts, and I'm hoping I fixed the audio this time, so I should sound ten times clearer and better. I am using a little handy-dandy microphone. This is slightly awkward as well, because my next-door neighbor is out and about, and I have my curtains open. So, yeah, anyways, okay. So, as usual, I'm Fire Lotus. Um, if you hear a dog barking or a cat meowing, because he's been doing that all morning, there's nothing I can do about that. Uh, it's my neighbor's dog. Normally, he wouldn't be barking now because, like I said, my neighbor's tending to his goats, so we shouldn't have a problem with that. My cat, on the other hand, my familiar uh, liquor, has been annoying this morning, so there's that. Um, so, for anyone who didn't know, I'm Fire Lotus. I've been doing these for... I blah, 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 English, please. Since are for two years now, I believe. Um, we're actually coming up on hello. We're actually coming up very soon, the 18th, I believe, or the 19th of the anniversary of me creating this page. So today, oh, there's a lot to unpack. Um, there is a book that I'm about to go over. Well, there's multiple books, but there's one particular one I'll be going over. There's also something that um, happened to me yesterday. Good morning. Uh, that happened to me yesterday, and it needs to be brought to because apparently I pissed some people off. And I didn't mean to, but it needs to be talked about. I've talked about it before. And before I go into that, know that everything that I'm saying, I'm not talking about a specific person necessarily. And I'm not hating on them. I'm not, you know... Y'all know, I'm just trying to have a conversation that needs to be had more often. So, without further ado. Um, oh, by the way, I'm still trying to learn how to read this. So, uh, today's color is white, and this is a crazy thing that happened. I tried to get a picture of it, but it would not work. So, okay, so I have not picked this up all day today, except for literally about 30 minutes ago, right? Before that, um, I had walked into the kitchen, and we have a bay window. Well, I had put some food out for uh, the two cats that we have outside. And for some reason, I put it on, like, the top of my porch, uh, the top of the stairs, instead of, like, the little bowl or the plate. And I walk out into the kitchen, and there is a cardinal just perfectly sitting there, just trying to eat the cat food. Of course, he didn't, but the reason I'm saying that is because the cardinal, it's actually a passage for today's date, the 7th, the cardinal stands for vitality, his red coat bright against winter snow. So I thought that was kind of cool because I opened this up and I'm like, holy shit. There's also a recipe that I will be going over. Um, if you have a TikTok, I'm pretty sure you've already seen it because this is a very, very popular herb. Um, and then after this, I'll post a picture. That way you can actually identify it. The cool thing is about this particular herb is there's only one lookalike, but it's also edible as well. So... Um, also, correction, yesterday, apparently I did misidentify those, um, plants, or some of them. What I thought was nightshade is actually bull nettle, specifically Texas bull nettle. And the other two, I'm still trying to figure out, uh, one of them is on the edge of my property, and it's in the sage family. The other one, which I think I found mullen, but I think I took the picture of the wrong one. Um, because Mullen has the, uh, this like silk on the top and the other part, uh, a folk name or a common name for it is actually cowboy toilet paper. That just is self-explanatory. Um, but Mullen is really, really great. And again, I'm not an herbalist. I'm not encouraging anybody to go out and forage or anything like that. But Mullen in general, if you can get it dried out at a herbal store after you do your own research, you know. Um, it's really great for the lungs, for breaking up crud and stuff like that. So, uh, and it can be used in smokable blends. So, there's a little weird tip for today. Uh, okay, so let's get into this. So, <clears throat> excuse me with that. So, yesterday, for anyone who doesn't use TikTok, and I know y'all are probably tired of me talking about TikTok, but literally that's kind of where this stuff goes. Really quick before that, though. The link that I shared right before this is the Pagan, uh, I think it's Pagan Information Channel. They do not have a podcast, but they do have a YouTube where they normally just like repost their TikToks. And they also have an Instagram where they do the same thing. But I'm telling y'all, y'all will love them. They're extremely professional. Um... Also, I wanted to point out, because the joke was on me, the astrology clothes practice thing that I went on about yesterday, apparently that was also an April Fool's joke because they're overwhelmed about how many people are saying this is closed, that's closed, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, it's very cool, though, um, and I'm 
also hoping to one day actually set up an interview with one or two of them, uh, just because if you've been in the pagan community for like since the 90s or the 80s or before that, you would probably know about Witchbox. It was a website that was worldwide, I believe. I don't think it was just specifically here in the United States. It started here, I believe. Um... It used to be to where you could literally go out and register. It was almost like Facebook or MySpace, but you couldn't do all the things. You just kind of registered what type of witch you were, some information. And then it like got broke down into um, groups like teenager, military, adults, covens. So it was a way that you could actually go and find stuff. On top of that, it was just a newsletter where they would update you regularly on things that were actually going on. Sadly enough, though, I believe in 2018 or 2019, it kind of shut down. Um, it was archived, but it was shut down. There was another one that's still here somewhere on the internet, um, and it's Mandrake something. Good morning, but I've also heard a couple of conflicting things about them. I have nothing to say bad about them because I'm actually on it. My Facebook and my podcast is on there. Um, so that's another way that people can reach me. But what they're doing is what Witch Fox, I wish TikTok would have been around for that to transfer over. Because we don't really have that many like official newsletters that are free. Or not necessarily free, but like readily available to everybody. There are a lot of newsletters, but they're prescription. And I understand that because people are putting their, you know, they're basically doing a career out of it. There's nothing wrong with that. And I understand that volunteer work can be a pain in the ass. Um, for example, my assistant uh, secretary, but literally she's becoming my best friend, Tracy. She's, she's helping me out on my page and she's doing it for free. And literally she's been a lifesaver. Um... So, I grabbed my coffee cup and didn't even drink. Anyways, and everybody else who's also helped me has been a lifesaver. Y'all don't understand. Um, Because <laughs> running all of this stuff by myself, it's amazing, but it can be overwhelming. And now I'm kind of starting to kind of get my feet growing and more people are coming. So, like, eh. Anyways, uh, yesterday there is this author. She is from Australian, uh, or from Australia. I did not know she was an author when I did this, but she was like, um, do you want to know if you're a witch? Or here are some things that basically make you a witch. Um, being eco-friendly, uh, buying locally, um, being a vegetarian, cleaning for the environment, making sure that, you know, we're, we rarely leave any evidence or footprints on earth. Now, before I go into this, I'm not necessarily saying that's wrong, but that doesn't make you a witch. If we want to go with the whole traditional ancestors and all that and the original OG practitioners like way throughout history, do you honestly think they believed that we were supposed to clean up after ourselves and make sure we didn't damage the environment? No, that's a newer concept. There's nothing wrong with that, and I do believe that we should help as much as we can, keep the environment clean, help out in the local communities, but realistically, especially now during a world pandemic, it's not, it, it that doesn't make you a witch. So anyways, I did a stitch kind of calling her out and saying that, you know, I'm tired of this shit, that there are authors... I also found out something interesting as well when I say this. There are books and authors that were published for a cash grab. And it's I've talked about this before about how there's this misconception in the pagan community or it's really bred into it in a way that the only time you get recognition for actually knowing what you're talking about and actually being a witch is publishing a book or publishing three books or being famous in some way, shape, or form. That does not make you a witch. Good morning. That does not make you a witch. For example, I did not know this. This book right here. There are actual spells in here. Like, there is information that you theoretically could use as a witch. This was published as fiction. It was not supposed to be real. But, lo and behold, it is sold in the New Age witchy part. So, that's one of those books. We also remember when Amazon, it was kind of blew up that some of the Wiccan books or um, certain downloadable books where there are no physical copies. It's just like an ebook. We found out that 
they were pagan. They were supposed to teach you how to start your craft. But we actually found out that the people who wrote them were not even pagan. They're not even witches. They literally, they're part of a think tank to pump out, mo to pump out books to get money. And with this particular person, somebody had commented on that video saying, wow, before you go after someone, why don't you Google them? I'm going to say this loud and clear. Being famous, having published books, having over 10,000 followers or subscribers, that does not make you a witch. I don't care who you are. That does not make you a witch. I don't care if you have 50 to 60 published books about witchcraft. That does not make you a witch. That makes you knowledgeable. Yes. Time, dedication, research, hard work, trial and error is what makes you a witch. Okay? And it it drove me crazy because now it has started this thing with witch talk in the witchy community of what makes you and doesn't make you a witch. And the other thing to bleed into that is it drives me crazy that we're having people come to the witchy community for clout. They'll make a video asking for help, but in reality, they're not serious. They're trying to do it for clout. And it drives me crazy that our community has become a laughing stock. And it's not just on TikTok. It's everywhere. And it, it drives me crazy because these people that were completely... Now, when I say this, I do not mean any negative aspect of this, but the, there are people on there that were basically nobody. Nobody knew who they were until TikTok. And then they had either A, the aesthetic, or they, they knew how to make content, and they gained this huge amount of following, and now they're like the OGs. They're all powerful. If you have to tell people you are a powerful witch... You need to check yourself because that basically you're just showing your insecurities. I've never stated that I'm a powerful witch. I've stated that I'm knowledgeable. Yes, but I don't know everything. And I know this. I learn every single day. And it, it people are forgetting. And true enough, this is more part of a spiritual thing of what I'm about to say. But you you've got to learn to kill your ego when it comes to this this is why i have to stay away from tiktok which community i'm finding the twitter community much more see i have a twitter but due to my spelling issues i'm extremely intimidated by twitter um what i've actually discovered in the witch community on specifically on tiktok it's the people that barely have a following that actually know what they're talking about and are not going after each other. And the sad thing is, it's becoming a pyramid scam. For the people that don't know, once you reach a certain amount of followers on TikTok, you can create, you can enter what is known as the creator fund. So every view, every interaction, no matter if it's positive or negative, that you get on a video, besides being reported, you eventually make money. It starts off as change. I don't think it's like $100, $200 bills or anything like that, but... You can make money. That's when the drama started between all these witches. On top of that, most of the OG witches, um, most of the OG witches literally know each other. It's like they formed cliques and then they started drama with each other. So they're going back and forth. Of course, all these people are sharing them, and what are they doing? They're making money. And it drives me crazy. This is the main reason that it's just and I have to watch what I say because I've stayed out of the drama and I have a specific, I don't want to say persona, but there's a spe there are specific things that kind of come with the fire lotus term that I have to abide by because I've always been that way. And that particular video, though, and the way that people handled it was like, oh, well, you're coming at her. She wrote a thick ass book. Basically, she reminds me of Silver Ravenwolf, and I understand that her herself is extremely controversial. Um, but if you look at her books, yes, some of them are really good. Some of them, especially the ones that are driven towards teenagers. <laughs> but all she does is revamp her books. She puts a new cover on it, and then boom, there's another one. And I myself, I'm calling myself out for a witch fell. I, when I was younger and I discovered witchcraft and then I was diagnosed with depression, 
I spent so much time basically wasting it of finding the perfect spell to magically cure my depression. And I'm sorry, it magic can't do that. Magic is more for the soul. That's where modern medicine or even ancient medicine, depending on what your path is or how you feel, comes in at. And there are people on said TikTok there are two people, I don't know if they know each other or not, but they kind of look the same. They're charging $400 for a reading, and you can tell they're fake. Like, straight up fake. They have crystals on there that are painted. They're not even real crystals on their website. And they've changed the names to make them look more witchy. And people are actually buying it. And I'm sorry. So many things. But it just, it, it bugs me because people are getting the wrong idea. There's, it happened in a Facebook group. I saw a, a particular person saying that 100% guaranteed he could cure all mental depression. No, that sets up false hope. And Silver Ravenwolf specifically, I believe one of her teen books has a depression spell in it. They're great spells. But... To think that a spell or a melting candle will be able to heal psychological either trauma or a chemical unbalance, it, it doesn't make sense. Even realistically, even scientifically, it doesn't make sense. Therapy, and I do agree with you, Mindy, $400 is completely ridiculous. Um, there are people that somehow got it in the, their heads that they can jump in someone's system that has DID. Um... That's not a thing. That that has to do with chemicals. And that's the problem with having all these people go on there is because the main thing that's pissing me off is I've seen so many comments, just Google it. No, don't Google it. Google sucks. I'm sorry, Google, if you hear this, you probably do. But you suck. Any, you suck. You're censored too much. Duck, duck, go. Um... Bing's kind of okay. There are other search engines that you can use. And if you don't believe it, test this. Like, straight up test it. Go to Google and type in something about witchcraft. Nine times out of ten, depending on how you word it, you're going to wind up getting D&D stuff, which there's nothing wrong with D&D, but you're going to wind up getting D&D stuff or magic playing cards. Not real information. And if it is, it's kind of that, like, watered-down information. But if you use other sites, not Google... Uh, like I said, DuckDuckGo, there's hundreds of other ones that you use. They're not censored. So therefore, you're going to be able to find more information. Tumblr, believe it or not, Tumblr is actually really good. There was a shit ton of information on there. Some of it, of course, it's like Pinterest. You kind of get good information, also weird information. And always check, double check. Like I have books here. I'll double check those books if I can. Um... But this book right here, it, it's aesthetically pleasing, yes, but it was published as a fantasy book, which means in no way, shape, and I'm not saying that the information in here cannot be used by an actual practitioner. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying for a person that doesn't fully understand how magic works, it's going to set up false pretensions, which means there's going to be an entire generation that's kind of like our generation. If you grew up in the 90s and you were a witch, whether you were practicing or not practicing, Everybody kind of went through that stage where they thought that was real. They legit thought that, like me, I thought I was going to have demons popping in and out of the house. I mean, I may have spirits popping in and out of my house, but I don't have demons popping in and out of my house. And that's okay because we were teenagers. You know, we still had more of our imagination. But as we get older, we kind of realize that, yes, you can do things that most people would say are not real when it comes to magic. But at the same time, you kind of got to slightly keep it realistic. Now, if you get a coven of witches or multiple witches, then the odds are almost who knows. Um, but it's it's setting that failure up. And it doesn't help that Charmed, the CW, the whatever you want to call that one, which I still watch it. I'm not going to lie. I watch it. Um, and then the Craft Legacies. A lot of mixed reviews on that. But at the same time, I kind of liked it. There are things in it that I didn't like. There are things that I did like. Um, because we need more stuff like that. We need more, hello, we need more actual, not necessarily movies, but we need, which it's finally happening, which is, is 
it's becoming a normal thing, which I never thought would ever happen, like, ever, uh, to be completely just, like, normal. Like, the other day, for the first time ever, and this is always my luck, too, when it comes to locally, um, the last place that I worked, Family Dollar, I walked in there, and this woman looked at my necklace, and she's like, oh my god, I love them, and I had no idea that she was a practitioner, and I'm like, of course, when I stop working, another witch starts working there. But it was really cool, too, because I, I met another practitioner. And it's just, it, it bugs me when people think that fame or your published books make you a witch. It doesn't. It, 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 it may vamp up your title, hello, but that's it. There have been so many books that have been published that you can tell were just straight up cash grabs. They only did it to get money. And not saying the information in said books are wrong, but you can tell when a passionate witch writes a book versus a cash grab. And social media is ruining that. You're having people jump in overnight that have the aesthetic of being a witch gain a lot of following, and they start teaching stuff, but the stuff they're teaching, it's either incorrect or it's completely wrong, and it doesn't work. Like, the same person I was talking about that's charging people $400 for a reading, she literally drew a regular, not even a sigil, it was literally, like, three lines on the palm of her hand, and she goes, this is how you activate your third eye. No! No, 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 it's not. It's It's like I said yesterday with... Mugwort. Drinking mugwort tea, you are not automatically going to astro project out of your body. It takes time and practice. Yes, some people will be able to do it easier. We we talked about that before. With it depends on you know it depends on multiple things, but that kind of goes into magic theory. But yes, there are some people that will naturally just pick up on things. There are other people on the exact opposite that will also naturally pick up on things. And then there are some people that will just have to work a little bit harder. But that's part of magic. If you don't want to work and you don't like researching and studying, then no offense, don't don't be a witch. Um, and if you are just an aesthetic witch, state that. Like straight up state, oh no, I'm I'm just aesthetic. Great. But don't go and try to teach what you don't know or what you don't fully understand. Like, there's a lot of things that I will not talk about because I have not done enough research in to be able to feel like I could actually relay information. Like, there's one that I wanted to do, and I'm still trying to do it, on the Satanic Panic. There's still a lot of misinformation. A lot of people are saying that started in California with the nursery. Yes and no. It originally started out of Canada. There was a psychiatrist who interviewed this person who he was also sleeping with. And that's where the rumors behind their daycare was Satan worshipings were working there. And they were performing rituals with kids and doing all this other shit. And then that bled off into the uh, Angel... Angelina just, I always have trouble saying that, um, a specific type of church that bled off into that. And then the thing in California happened and then media just swarmed it with Satanist here, Satanist there. And it was bad. Like people lost their lives due to that and those accusations. And if the witchy community doesn't watch out due to how popular social media is right now, we're going to wind up repeating that history. And I've said this time and time again, we are very close and on the er on the verge of possibly repeating another satanic panic. And I was lucky. And if you if you were lucky enough to grow or lucky unlucky, that's bittersweet, but I grew up in Alabama, small town Alabama. Like, there are multiple towns in Alabama. What they're known for is having most churches uh, on a square block. Like, there were more churches than there were police stations and everything else. And I was luckily never, I never got put in a compromising situation where my life was at risk. I got ridiculed and bullied, or I scared the shit out of everybody, or they judged me for seeing a star around my neck. But... You know, not all these people are lucky like that. Like, I had someone who, um, I don't really know their age, but I do believe they're a little bit loader. Um, 
It's just like the article I showed you yesterday about the pandemic, which is flooding online. Yes, exactly. Anyone can pick up a pen, but it is the countless hours, days, years, time, research, and experience that creates the practice of a witch. Yes, exactly. And see, people are not realizing this. And a TikToker, a... I'm going to say they, because I don't know what they like to be called, which is also confusing. Anyways, um, they said it the perfect way, which was... The problem with the pandemic, which is, especially the younger generation, is the internet. Due to the internet and versus from, like, us when we had dial-up and it wasn't even worth dialing it up just to get online because of how slow it was versus now, we had to work and actually do research for our answers. Now, we have it in the tips of our hands. And that's the issue. They're expecting to get instant results and it doesn't work that way. Reading a spell and reciting it and throwing shit on a candle and burning it or throwing it in a jar, even with your intention set, that's still not magic. That's manifesting, possibly, but that's not magic. Magic is learning to manipulate energy. Hi, I'm late for everyone. It's okay. There's no such thing as being late here. You have arrived at the perfect time. Um... But that's the problem. They're wanting easy answers and easy fixes. And then they're coming up with these names and titles to kind of catch your attention. Like, I've interviewed a Death Witch, so I'm not really hating on any of them. But, and I do like, it's technically the term Death Witch. But the problem with that is, people are taking the term Death Witch and they're using it as a threat. They're using it as, why would you piss off a Death Witch? No, why would you piss off any witch? And that's what's irking me right now. It's it's the title. That doesn't make you... Yes, true enough, I'm saying this, and literally witch is in my title. Fire Lotus the Witch. But I'm not going around saying, oh, don't piss me off, I'm going to set you on fire. No. Plague witches, death witches, sea witches, moon witches, lunar witches, crystal witches, herb witches, green, which green witch has been around, kitchen witch has also been around. But they're adding new stuff to it, and I don't see the point of it. Like, and it's so weird because it's an oxymoron because this is the same generation that started breaking all of these norms and being labels down only to turn around and label themselves. And I'm like, you're literally an oxymoron. Like, that doesn't even make sense. You're going to fight to be free, to not be judged on how you look, your sexuality, your orientation, all of that, which is important. But at the same time... Instead of just saying, yo, I'm a witch, you're going to add all the special shit to it. Why? It does not make sense. It doesn't make you stronger. It doesn't matter if you practice necromancy magic versus angelic magic versus traditional witchcraft versus paganism or North Path. That does not make you powerful. The more knowledge you have gives you more power. Yes. But... It, it literally, it was like one point in time, the entire community was just like most of them, not all of them, were like, you know, which wand's bigger than the other? And I'm like, why does it matter? We're not in Hogwarts. Hollywood has messed up a lot of the witches because they believe they can do as they do without the research. Exactly. And that's the problem. Like I myself, I love most of the movies, the TV shows. There's actually a movie, speaking of witches and movies. And the reason I love this is because it's not like Charmed. It is the most accurate movie that I've seen what a witch goes through. And I will post it. I will find the uh, IBDM to it. And I'll post it in the trailer. Me and my partner watched it together. And we both cried. And it, trigger warning though. There is a lot of messed up stuff in it. it it's, it's a rated R movie. It's a horror movie kind of. But it's basically a woman gets accused of being a witch. Her husband off himself, trigger warning, off himself because he got the plague. She never caught it. So, it, it, and it happened in England where they were actually burning them. Or, well, I don't know specifically in England, but over there. And, yes, same, and I'm going to get to that in a second, Karen. Hold on. Um, But this movie, I actually cried because she doesn't use, she can't shoot shit from her hands. She does magic. But it's more realistic, minus the aspect they do, of course, involve the devil trying to, like, get to her. But it's not necessarily evil. Seriously, if y'all ever have time, watch it. Again, trigger warnings. There's a lot of things in there that could trigger some people. But in general, it's a great movie. Um, but yes, Kieran, like Kieran said, 
the Sweep series. If anybody has teenagers and you want a good, wholesome book series, Sweep series. It was originally created, if I remember correctly, it was originally from Germany. And over there, it was actually called Wicca. But when the author tried bringing it over here, they're like, you're not going to be able to sell something called Wicca. So they named it Sweep. It's about this one girl's bloodline. Um, I don't know the movie name by heart. I'm going to look it up right after this live, and I'll post it in the comments. Ancestors from England in the 1800s, so that moved the castles. Interesting. Ooh, you'll like it then. I think all of y'all would like it, honestly. Um, But with the Sweep series, it is long. Like, very long. Most burnings took place in Scotland and only a few in England. They were mostly hung or drowned. See, I didn't even know that. See, I'm learning stuff every day. And I did not I did not know that they were mostly burned in Scotland. A few, there were a few here in America. There's also a misconception with um oh the sweep series. I don't I know off the top of my head what her name is. I think it's Kate something. But uh, there's like 16 books in the entire series. Normally they're like that. But they have it now in volumes. And I think there's five or six volumes. Parents would love it. No matter your age, you're probably going to love it. It is kind of slow. There's a lot of fillers. But it's a really, really great book series. And especially for kids. Um, for the fantasy thing and stuff like that. But um, here in America, most people focus on the Salem Witch Trials. Yes, thank you. Uh, that is the title of the... Um, the thing. And I think the movie's called The Cru... No, it's not called The Crucible. Is it called The Crucible? Hold that thought. Did I leave my Wi-Fi on? I did leave my Wi-Fi on. Okay, so yeah, I can tell y'all the uh, movie. But, um... Let me turn this down. Ah. So, everybody focuses on the Salem Witch Trials. That's not the only witch trials that happen here in America. And there were at least two to three of them where they were claims that they actually did burn them. They did not just hang them, they actually burned them. Oh my god, Corey, we do live now. <laughs> Why do you say that? We do live together now. Um, The movie is... Where's the video? Ha! Move. I'm watching my TikTok now that I talked about. The director, though, directed Game of Thrones. The Reckoning. The Reckoning, and that's what it looks like. You have a girl with a sword on it and kind of glowing eyes. Um... I think Shudder did it. It's really, really good, though. Because Feb let two people do it. Love just saw the button. Oh, cool. Um, But yeah, it's called The Reckoning. Like I said, it's rated R. Trigger warning, if because there are some... Um, well, there are things in it that would trigger people, especially if you've had certain types of trauma. But in general, it it's it's better than The Witch. It's it's better than any other witch movie that I've seen because it's kind of historically accurate about what they went through. And there's kind of a twist at it, but like I said, I cried. I cr I cried my fucking eyes out. Um it's an amazing movie though. But that it it bugs me though that all of this stuff is going on because if you stand up and say something against them, well, then you're just being childish and you don't know what you're talking about. Yes, it is extremely good. And speaking of book series, I've got to do more research on it. So if anybody, if y'all been keeping up with me for a while, you should know. Um, the author behind Practical Magic came out with two other books. The first one that she came out with, The Rules of Magic, was the sequel, or technically a prequel, to Practical Magic. It was the story of the Owens aunts. The third book that she released goes all the way back to the original Owen. I have not finished reading it. I've read, a, I think I read two chapters of it. Um, but on top of that, that basically explains the entire, like it goes more into detail and you're going to love it. Here's the Amazon link to the complete suite. Thank you so much for posting that. Um, 
But in this particular book, she talks about... Um, I have actually not read the Practical Magic book. I tried to, but because I watched the movie, it messed me up. But in this one, um, I'm trying to think of the name. She basically, it's, it's, it's the one that it all started with. It's her. It's an amazing book. She's also coming out later. I think it's later this year or next year. She's coming out with another, or instead of a book, a novel involving the Owens, um, and their family. But what's interesting, and I don't know if COVID has fucked it up yet, but um, HBO had picked up and they were talking about turning the rules of magic into an actual live action TV series. And that book specifically goes into stuff that they did not talk about in the family and it gives the backstory of them. It's funny, I said Practical Magic in my head randomly yesterday, and here we are talking about it. Yes, I love Practical Magic. Practical Magic and the original craft have to be two of my favorite movies. And of course, Hocus Pocus. There's also rumors that Hocus Pocus is, they're trying to figure out a way for them to come back. Um, the book that was written as a like continuous of the story, it's actually Max's Kids. Um, and it happens in New York City, and then it also talks about the book itself, without spoiling anything, talks about the other sisters of the three in Hocus Pocus. It goes into way more deep dive and detailing. Um, but I wish, the only problem is, it. I wish somebody would actually make a full TV series but following Witches Around, I know on YouTube, and I've talked about this, I actually had to correct myself. There was an advertisement that I shared when I first started doing these that was circulating on my Facebook, and it was called Conjure Candles. The advertisement, the way that it was worded, it came off as it was 100% guaranteed that it would work. Right after that, the family behind this company actually created a YouTube series talking about traditional conjure and kind of the things that go get, they go through. I'm not really going to talk much about it. As in, I would check it out. It's not that bad. But I wish somebody would come together and try to create, like, a, basically like a day in the life of witches. But, like, in different states and stuff like that. I think it would be really cool. Because what I hate about the aesthetic aspect that's currently going on and trending with witchcraft is witchcraft is not always aesthetic. There's a lot of stuff that we do that just plain out is not appeasing. But I also think that's how certain magic should be. Like, if you do the the whole spell where uh, you're stopping people talking from you, and you go to the grocery store, and you get a cow tail, I mean a cow tongue, and you cut it open, stick your herbs and stuff in there, and the names and petitions, and you sew it back up and nail it to a tree, I don't really think you can make that aesthetically pleasing. But again, it's not supposed to. Um, that's one of the reasons I've shown my altar in multiple states is because, and it kind of goes the saying I was taught when I was younger and I was still in church, but it's like, it doesn't matter how you go to church or how many times you go to church, as long as your Bible is never dusty. With your altar, on the other hand, I think it kind of, with me and my personal opinion, I like seeing altars where you can tell people have worked or they've at least, you know, done stuff. That's one of the reasons if I can, I have two altars. I have my main altar and then I have my working altar um, or my little workspace. But it bugs me when people like critique other people on their altar. And I'm just like, you, you can't say that unless you are on a specific set path that has specific rules and even then, it's kind of questionable. They're more like guidelines. It, it, Like I said, my Facebook post that I did at my altar, an altar and what it looks like shows your magic. Real witches publicly showing their lives can also be dangerous for them. Fear of people over to... Yeah, that is true, too. I didn't really think about that. And that's what drives me crazy. Like, we have all these other boring reality shows... We got uh, Nat, uh, National Geographic and Discovery Channel. We got Cartels. We got um, Moonshine Making, which I've actually watched multiple seasons of that. Um, 
We got all these other things, but yet it's still dangerous. We still live in a world, a world where witchcraft is dangerous. Like recently, I don't know if I talked about it or not, but in um, some part of Africa, there was a six-year-old that was expelled from her school because of witchcraft. True enough, some of the things she said was creepy as fuck, but her life is still at danger. And somehow that, or right around that same time on TikTok, it started this movement of witches being oppressed, and then that bled into the all lives matter and all other stuff that I stay out of. Because like I said, we're all human. It's it, we're we, There's only one race. There's the human race. So, But, again, I'm not doing the political thing. But with that... And a lot of people are like, no, well, no, you're not oppressed. In some ways, some witches are still oppressed. It's just like sexuality. Um, you know, there are still per- certain parts. And there are still parts, especially in the States, uh, when it comes in, which I do not like talking about it, but it comes in race, there are still parts that are called uh, sundown towns. Basically, if you are not Caucasian... Um, or light-skinned, you you should not really be there because it would be very dangerous. Do I agree with that? Fuck no. But there are still places like that. Just because we live here in America does not mean that, honestly, the people we have to fear the most are probably our fucking neighbors. Luckily, though, I told y'all the story, and if y'all don't know, um, needless to say, the uh, county department, police department where I live, they know about me. And they're scared of me. Um, It was when I used to do the lives and like full on makeup. I forgot that I was wearing full on makeup. And I forgot that I had feathers in my hair. And like eight different necklaces on. And I had heavy eyeliner on. And I had my green jacket on. And I'd randomly walked outside and they were here. I don't know why they were here. I think somebody had called them on a dog or something. But I completely forgot what I looked like. And then I had my um, bedroom shoes on, which were my grandmother's, so they just did not everything together, just no. Needless to say, they they don't like me. I scare the shit out of them, um, which is cool, very cool, that I do scare the shit out of them, you know, no one's gonna fuck with us. Um, but at the same time, I wouldn't have done that in, like, Alabama, like, right now with my eyeliner, I still, depending on where I'm going, I will not have it on just because I already get stared at due to my necklaces, especially if I go to the town over and go grocery shopping where I used to work. No, 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 no. There's a reason, like, I hated going to that grocery store. Not the one that I used to work at, the one next to it. Because even though I'm in Florida, when I had colored hair, I would get stared at so fucking bad, which would make me self-conscious, Absolutely, especially in small areas that are very religious. You got judged for having crystals. Yes, exactly. Like, um, uh, Siva, the Southern Fried Witch. She just now came out publicly because of where she lives. And there was a huge controversy with her. Well, not with her, but at one of the places she worked at. And if you know, you know, I don't necessarily want to go into it because it's not really, like, thing. But she made the newspaper... Because of where she worked. She is a professor. She was. There we go. And let's just say there was a huge controversy behind that. But she still decided to stay in the closet. She had recently came out earlier this year. Um, And it was because where they live, it's so royal. um, that And very, 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 very like religious. That they were afraid that they were going to wind up with a... Uh, a cross burning in their yard. The only crazy thing I've ever had is I've had someone throw holy holy water at me, and I've had people throw... I had one person throw a locker at me... A locker, wow. A Bible at me, and then the other two, they either tried leaving it in my locker, or they left it in my mailbox. But the cool thing is I never had to deal with Jehovah Witnesses. They showed up to my... uh, The house that I was staying at with my uh, stepfather once, and the way that it was set up when you open the front door... If my bedroom door was open, you could see in it. And I had been burning incense all day. And I had blackout light in there. Like, it was really dark, but lit with candles. And I was listening to um, Slipknot. Needless to say, me opening the door with black fingernail polish and a black shirt on 
with the music and the freaking incense. Needless to say, they never came back to our house. So, that's one way of taking care of them. Um, but at the same time, that's another thing that differs witches from other certain types of religion. Well, for one, it's not really religious, but for two, you don't really see us going door to door asking, hey, have you heard about the old ones? No. I mean, it would be really fucking cool. Uh, but yeah, we don't do that. We don't try to recruit people. We're very open to like explaining to people. I've had plenty of people straight up ask me in public, but they were serious. You know, why do you wear these symbols? What do you believe? And at first I used to find it rude because it would be like me walking up to someone and be like, yo, what's your religion? But at the same time, I saw it as I can educate this person, whether they wanted to practice or not at least the stereotypes that they have about the symbols I wear or how I look, I would be able to educate them and stop those stereotypes. And TikTok being what it is right now, they're not helping with the stereotypes. They're making it extremely worse. Um, also, for anybody who partakes in basil, I'm going to say basil, um, this book, it's really good. Um, I was actually surprised by it. I've only got, like, a few sections to go, but I was very intrigued by this book. Yeah, we have more churches here than Dollar Generals. It's hard to be open. It is like I'm in a broom closet again. It does suck. Uh, a book that you may find interesting, um... If you don't already have it, I'm pretty sure you can find it online, is um, Small Town Pagan. It's not really like a how-to book, but a lot of what's in it were actual letters from people who live in small rural areas who wrote in to the author. So there are great, there's a bunch of great tips in there as well. Um, believe it or not, one of the first times down here in Florida where I met somebody was, um, I was selling some camping stuff. And uh, let it go, the app. And it, thankfully, my partner is with me. But we met them out in, like, bumfuck middle of nowhere. And I have uh, this silver, sterling silver ring that was gifted to me by um, my adopted grandmother, basically, uh, for my birthday. And he looked at it, and he, like, grabbed my hand, and he looked at it, and he goes, Oh, so you're a witch, and I'm like, oh shit, because my first appearance of them, they're very country. I'm talking rebel flags, like good old country, kind of basically the people I grew up with. But it shocked me because he's like, oh, so you're a witch. Are you pagan? And I'm like, uh. And then he, he pulled out his, and he goes, I'm Norse. And I was like, oh my god, this is blowing my mind right now. But um, there are a lot of people out there. We already find our people. Yes, and it's so true, too. With me, though, I did, at one time, thought I was cursed. Because, like, and this was actually when I first actually openly came out to my mom and, like, told her. And she gave me permission that I could do it up under her house. It was before we met my uh, stepfather. And every single time I would be introduced or meet a witch, I would move. I shit you not. I lived in this one town. For two and a half years, there was this one guy who had the uh, triquetragram, the um, the uh, charm symbol, tattooed on his arm. And I'm like, oh, you're a witch. Tried to get his attention. I'm not randomly going to walk up to somebody and say that. So the day that I'm leaving, the last load of our stuff that we were taking to the new place, I had thrown one of my books, uh, and I think it was the uh, it was the only Wiccan spell book you'll ever need. Still a great book. Um... Uh, but I threw it up in the window, and I was reading another book, and it just so happened he had walked by, and we started talking. I never saw him after that. But every other time after that, I would meet a witch, and something would happen, and we'd lose contact. So I legit thought I was cursed at one point in time. I still don't understand it, besides I guess I'm supposed to be like a primarily just solitary. But yes, witches do you... I have definitely seen it to where, like... And you'll never... It, it's always when you're not looking. Because with me, that's one of the reasons I wear pentagrams, or at least magic symbols, when I go out. Is for multiple reasons. For one, you never know who you're going to inspire. You never know who's going to see that sign and 
course, thanks to Hollywood, they'll probably know what it is and actually go home and start researching it. And just by seeing that, just by seeing another witch in public, you could possibly spark somebody's interest in the craft. And then on top of that, it it's weird because all the times that I've tried to find them, I've never found them. But all the times I'm not expecting it. Like there was another one at a gas station we locally stop at. Um a uh, girl asked me what this was. Or uh she thought it was Mason and I'm like, "No, it's it's a pentagram." She goes, "Are you pagan?" And I said, "Yeah." And of course, I got like extremely awkward and shy and like quiet and like kind of shut down and as I was leaving, she's like, "Blessed be." And I'm like, why is it when I'm not looking for other practitioners, I meet them? It's like a magnet effect. When I do cross paths with another witch, I get so excited. Same! And then, like, there have been a couple of ones who, like, showed no interest. And, like, I'll comment them. If I see that they're wearing jewelry, that's a, my number one go-to. I'm going to comment their jewelry. Because, for one, you know, it's a compliment. But, for two, that automatically brings their attention to, oh, they just recognize this sign. And it there there's one or two of them that I've met that just had absolutely no care in the world that I there was another witch. With me, I still look at it like I'm seeing a fucking unicorn, which is weird considering witchcraft is popular. But at the same time, I do it all the time. It's just like I'm like, oh, they are real. We're not extinct. We're still here. Which I still am going to try at some point this year to try to create some type of actual safety first, though. Either that or when the world goes back, or at least becomes on what it is now, uh, I would love to do an actual meet-up. Oh, I would love to come in England. Oh my god, I, would I wouldn't leave. Legit, I would not leave. There is so much history there that I just want to walk and, like, touch... I know that sounds weird, but just to be able to, like, do that, I want to go. I want to go to Ireland, too. Oh, I'd probably never leave. I wouldn't. I would never leave. But I would also love that. Like, I talked to my partner. Um, I was just kind of, like, joking casually, but I was like, you know, with me meeting all these people, I want to do a road trip, and I, I want to eventually, at some point in time, when things are safer, I would love to, like, pick a couple of states and, like, just kind of track this, like, one-way thing so I could actually meet people. But the thought of me traveling now? No. No, no. But, anyways, when it comes to a witch, being famous or having stuff published doesn't make you a witch, necessarily. And it, it drives me crazy when people do, when people say stuff like that, because with my content that I do, England is beautiful, I have quite the story of a visit, which I didn't understand then, as a teenager, I'm in, sweet, yeah, see, I like this, oh, I like this, um, but, um, it's very weird, because that's why I kind of changed, because when I first started doing my TikToks, I was actually showing people how to make things and showing people how to do things. And I kind of stopped that. And now I'm just like, hey, here's some interesting information. Now go without that. Either that or I'll answer questions. Um, that's one of my favorite things is to actually answer questions. Um, but that and at the same time, it's, it's very hard to get stuff in a minute. Um, there are some TikTokers, though, that are part of the beta program to where they can actually do, like, three minutes. But that's one of the reasons I don't read online. I used to, and I've done it a couple of times. I, I'm seriously, I would love to do it. Like, for one, I need a long vacation. But it would also be cool because, like, I would be able to do interviews and TikToks in person. But, um... And I've done a few readings, but it's extremely hard to do an intuitive reading when you see a clock counting down. It drives me crazy, though. I did want uh, to ask y'all, now that we're now that I'm thinking about it, because I wrote it down, um, some of the TikToks, now that I have a newer phone and I have much more space, I'll, I can download them and do like I was doing before, where I was making the albums here on my page. 
which ones would y'all be interested in? Um, I can't stand the witch talk community. You're an exception. Honestly, say there are only a handful of people that I've met that they're not really part of the witch talk. I mean, they're a witch, but some of them, they don't even actually talk about their stuff. They talk about completely different other stuff. But I agree. Like, I don't really like it either. It drives me crazy because I've been triggered so many times where I've had to step away from my phone and I'm just like, nope, not going to do it. But at the same time, using TikTok has built my confidence so much. Um, a lot of the insecurities that I used to have, I no longer have now, which this also helped too. Me going live and then doing TikToks have helped me boost my confidence to where I'm more adventurous, but I'm also more open to doing that, like the whole slits in my eyebrows. That's not natural. <laughs> um, and then, I don't know if you can tell, but I have a triangle cut right here. For fire, element of fire, and then I have that random slash right there. But um, this will be changing soon, though. I'm planning on bleaching it. Which does run the risk of me wanting to add color to it. But I haven't actually had my hair bleached in a while. So that's going to be fun. Um, so I did have a misconception with the interview. Uh, the interview will be happening tomorrow, but the traditional witch... I. I misread his text message, so we've got to pick a date. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's those two. Um, but new stuff is coming. One of the biggest things is, but I've got to wait to when it's not windy as hell, which is the downside of living on a lake. Um, I want to do another meditation episode with my podcast, and then I want to do the video of me opening and closing a circle and more kind of hands-on. I wanted to ask you about your hair yesterday, but I didn't want to hurt your feelings. You're beautiful no matter how your hair looks. Oh, no. I I randomly cut it. I've always cut my hair. And once I cut it off and I grew it out for so long, I realized that, eh, fuck it. It'll grow back. But, um, yeah, I do plan on dyeing it or bleaching it. Um, hopefully I can go back to the color that I had probably about four years ago. Um, but I do plan on eventually growing it back out. I just had to restart new fresh look. Um, but yeah, no, it wouldn't hurt my feelings though. But, uh, yeah, that's going on. And then I'm in the process of starting up a discord. We do have the messenger group. Thanks to Tracy. Uh, we do have the group. Four Dwellers of the Hollow up. So if you do want to be added to that, just comment in the um, the group. Or if you'd like to be added to the group, um, send me a message on this page and I'll send you a direct link. Uh, and then you can join the messenger as well. But eventually I will be starting a Discord. Um, I've just got to get a couple of moderators. And then I also have to figure out how the hell it works. Uh, but with that... I'll be able to bring a lot of the people on TikTok, the actual people that are trying to learn, are kind of like all the us, all down to earth. They're not the whole witch talk community, the actual other people. Um, they don't really use Facebook that much, but a Discord service they would use. So I'm trying to do like I was doing before, where I'm kind of reaching everything. I tried to save Facebook's... Um... Oh, sweet. Okay, sweet. Um, see, I couldn't use Discord before because it wouldn't load on my phone, and I'm, I'm still kind of in shock of how much I can do now with this phone instead of the phone that I had. The only thing I do not like is the camera, because the camera that I had before was before HD was a thing, and th yes, I will message you after this, but, um... I can see all of my flaws that I consider flaws in the camera, and especially I have huge pores when I get hot. And yeah, I'm not used to that with the whole phone thing. Um, but yeah, I tried downloading a live yesterday, or the live that I did yesterday before I went on the walk, and Facebook is starting to piss me off. <laughs> Because they're like, download successful. And I go to look into my phone, and I was like, whoop. 
Uh, Discord, from what I understand, it's like an organized group message, but like the old school chat rooms. It's cool because you can have a general chat, but add different things to say topics like elements and runes and stuff. That's way loads of conversations don't get lost. See, the only thing I'm nervous about that, which I'm going to like straight up tell everybody, is I do use speech to text and autocorrect <laughs> because, oh, there's the hawk. Where did you go? Was that the hawk or the falcon? Sorry, the window behind me. It's, I have the curtain drawn. Um, but we have a visitor. They're up in the tree stalking me right now. Um, I have dyslexia, so, like, my spelling, the way my brain works is how it sounds is how I spell it. Luckily, though, there is Google, so if I don't know a word, I'll use it in a sentence, and normally it fixes it. Um, but I also, I don't want to, my biggest fear is I'm going to start all of this and then kind of slightly take off and get overwhelmed. So I'm slowly moving into it, but, um... Yeah, I was going to upload my live, which I'm going to try to do today on my YouTube page. Um, and then I plan on hopefully making at least one to two videos on my YouTube. Are you okay? No. No. Sorry. Bubbers has a window back over there, and the squirrels love torturing him. And he does not quite realize that he has glass in front of him. And that's what happens. He keeps falling out of it. Um, but yeah, there's a, also another app that I think is kind of like Discord, but it's called, a, I think it's Aminio. Aminio? Aminio? And with that one, you can actually add, like, you can customize the entire thing. So I'm going to be looking around for that. I wanted to do a Snapchat, but... Personally, I don't like Snapchat that much for multiple reasons. Um, but I don't know. And then I've still also got to start actually posting on my Instagram. So, but the problem is, like, I don't even know where to begin. I know I got to do the book reviews, but other than that, I don't know where to begin on, on like what content to make and how to make it and all other shit. But I am going to start looking into, um, editing software so I can actually start editing. And then I'm also going to start looking into zoom or Skype, if that's still a thing to possibly some of these interviews to possibly actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Like I did finally get to use my microphone, which I'm using right now. Um, so yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that I'm going to be working on. I'm also hopefully going to be fixing my computer soon. And with that, a lot of the things that I want to try to do will become much easier. I've just got to find somebody local who's not going to charge me an arm and a leg to change a port. Um, but yeah, that's going to happen. I've got to clean my circle out so I can do the circle. Um, and I don't know if I want to do the circle like a traditional circle casting, or if I want to try casting the compass, I think that would be a little bit more interesting than doing, because the, some of the basics, I've been asked so many times to do like some of the basic stuff, and the reason that I haven't is because it's already been done. True enough, I can add my own like spark to it, but like, like I had somebody today ask me, um, and I responded with a video of how to practice without, like, if you live in a house where you can't be open about it. For the people that are answering their calling, they have it so much easier now than we did. Because now you have cell phones. There are apps. There are YouTube videos. There are podcasts. There's so much other stuff that you can do research without actually having physical items of said things. We didn't have that. Like, we had to go and search online at our libraries and still being paranoid, there's so many times where I would have, like, my Facebook or MySpace page open. And then I'd have, like, ten other tabs open that were involving witchcraft. But, like, I would just be, like, clicking back and forth if somebody walked by me. Yes! And that's how I kind of feel. That's why I love doing these lives. Because, yeah, I've talked about the basics. But at the same time, we can talk about different, more in-depth stuff. And with the YouTube, 
with TikTok primarily, I went over so many basics. I went over book recommendations, magic water. I did a series on that. Magic dirts and dust. I did a series on that. And it's just... Eh. But what I'm planning on doing and hopefully want to, I want to start actually recording some of the things that I do and kind of start actually showing my path. Not necessarily have like an audio of like a walkthrough. It may just be like a steel with like some type of music playing. But I like that because Lady Grave Dancer, if y'all have not looked her up yet on YouTube, you will love her. Um, and her hashtag, as long as she hasn't changed it, is Lady Grave Dancer. I adore her. And if I could ever meet her in life, I would love it. And then, of course, rest in peace. But uh, Tiptoe Chick, her stuff is still up, I believe. And she has... Like, so much stuff. Her main thing, what uh, the video that kind of blew up with her, was um, is Wiccan Right For You, and then she goes over books. If you move to YouTube, I'll be down with Facebook finally. It's so negative anymore. Same, and I want to, but, like, the only thing that's holding me back from fully transitioning over to YouTube is you can't go live on a mobile device Unless you have over a thousand followers, and I'm at a hundred and fourteen, which slightly pissed me off yesterday because I announced in my video that I was at a hundred and fifteen, and right after it posted, the person unfollowed me. So I was just like, eh. Um, I'm nearby. Just let me know if you need help. Thank you. I totally will. We have to hang out very soon. Um, I've told my partner so much about you, and he's like, "Do I know her?" And I'm like. I don't, I've met, I either met you or your husband, because I used to stay, uh, in the daytime with one of my friends around the area you're located where your work's at, and I've walked in there a couple of times, um, I love Tiptoe Chick, man, like, oh, I miss her so much, um, but, yeah, I'm, I've got a lot of stuff in plan, but with my YouTube, until I get to a thousand, or until I get my Facebook, I mean, my computer fixed, I still have delays because, um, oh, with the followers annoying. Yes, it is. Okay, sweet. I thought so. I wasn't for sure, though, because I was amazed. My first thing walking in, and I saw the necklaces that were paganish, and I was like, oh, there's a witch nearby. Lo and behold, holy shit, only did I know that I would actually actually start talking to you. I think it was about a few months later. Um, but, uh, yeah, with YouTube, that's the only downfall. The thing that I do like is it's less censored. Um, and with TikTok, I can go live now on TikTok, but I am so nervous about it because people get blocked all the time for one person reporting them and then everything just goes to shit but yes that is my ultimate goal is to start actually going real hard about this um and the only thing because the only thing that was holding me back before was my phone and now that that is out of the way so many things are possible now um and i'm excited about it super super excited um but yeah it's just i'm try i gotta figure out my barons because like it's been said, there's so there's so much stuff that's kind of already been done over and over again. And, uh, I mean, that's the one thing with my YouTube. Like, don't expect that. Like, it's not going to look where I have all these B-roll. I mean, eventually it may, but I like the stuff the way it is because that's how life is. Like, if you were to meet me in real life, I may be slightly awkward, but that'll pass. And then it's the same person. I won't shut up. I will literally talk your brain off. There was something else that I wanted to talk about too. I've got to start taking better notes. Oh, I will be picking from this. I forgot that I was doing that. Same. I cannot wait to meet you in real life either. Um... And then I know I got to make a video. I've got to get out. I've got to get my ass outside and actually start cleaning up the yard. 
I'll just rein in my energy. You may have to. I'm very sensitive. Oh, trust me. I know I've already talked about that, too. I told my partner, I was like, there are a couple of places here in Florida that I would love to go this year. Even if it's for like a day, I would like to go. Because where I'm at, we're only... I think three to four hours away from Orlando, if that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've got to get outside and actually clear out my circle. And then clear, redo my garden because the cats destroyed it. See, I've actually never been to Disneyland. I've never been to Disneyland. I've never been to Six Flags. None of that. The most fun thing that I've been to is uh, the like local fairs that come through. By the way, if y'all don't know, if you ever get a chance to go to a local fair, you may actually find crystals there. Um, right above where I'm at, actually, there's a flea market. I don't know if they're still doing it anymore um, due to the whole COVID re and restrictions and everything. But um, there is a one specific woman, and I wish I could find her business card. I think I still have her on Facebook. She sells crystals, and it's where I found my uh, celestial, my citrine celestial at, or smoky quartz citrine celestial at, and they're really good priced. And I think that's mainly because she bought a huge stock off of somebody else, and she herself doesn't really do crystals or know that much about them, so they're extremely cheap. So, and let me tell you, crystals are addicting. But like I used to do with crystals was uh the mystery boxes online because you can go to etsy and you can find some for like 20 bucks for like a pound that are just kind of mixed priorities of them but uh i do want to start doing some like hands-on cooking making certain things like powders and stuff like that because it a lot of people tend to make like a uh, dragon's blood oil it's not that complicated to make some of these oils. Now, depending on what you're doing, it can be. Like Florida water, for example, it can be expensive depending if you use essential oils or fresh herbs. If you have fresh herbs, then it's easy. If you don't have fresh herbs and you have to use essential oils, it can be a little bit expensive. But like uh, the incense that I'm using right now, I buy them at a gas station. And they're primarily to hide basil smell or the smell of basil. Um, but they're amazing. One of them's a money blessing spell. And I just basically enhance the aspect of that money blessing into that. And then, like I said, with the rice, uh, green rice or prosperity rice, it's extremely easy to make and it's not culture appropriating and you can use it in your own practice. Um, put it in your money jar, uh, put it in spells, sprinkle it around the candle. So if you, if you do cast a circle, when you do small spell candles, use that green rice. Orange rice can be used as, uh, see, I started to, I started to get a little bit more weary about incense, uh, specifically the other brand that I was using before this one, cause I would light it and I would always get a headache and couldn't figure out why it was the incense. But, um, I primarily try to make my own instant blends. Uh, that will be something that I'll be posting if I haven't already posted it yet. Making homemade instant cones is extremely easy. Uh, I did not understand how easy it was. Um, but, and what I'm about to say, all this shit can be bought by a store as well. Um, and I did find a way around having to use a type of resin or Arabic gum or like dragon's blood. If you can get a type of resin to crush up and use, it is better because they'll stick together a little bit. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I do believe, and I could be wrong, but I do believe using rice, it's primarily from Conjure, Hoodoo, and Creole Voodoo. But, oh, yes, um, just get food coloring. I used, actually, I actually used water paint. But get food coloring, green and orange. Orange for, um, primarily it's used in road openings. Basically, banishing anything or kind of destroying anything that kind of stands in your way. And what I did was, the other night, I added the paint, stirred them around in two bowls. Um, got two pieces of tin foil, Turned my oven on, I think it was like 140. And I set a timer for like 10 minutes. And spread them out. I did add a couple of herbs. I spread them out. 
and just bake them so they were dry so they wouldn't mold or anything and you have colored rice and you just use it for your spell work and then rice itself if i'm not mistaken primarily stands for like prosperity and depending on what you want to use it for but yeah you can use rice in your practice i love making incense i do loose on a charcoal list see i like charcoal but for me my biggest problem with incense is they never burn long enough but uh to make an incense get dry herbs um store bought or whatever crush them up into the finest powder that you could possibly get unless you like it a little bit chunkier that works too add your moon water or solar water a tiny amount first and then slowly add until you get to like a paste and you literally just do them like this press them together or you could if you wanted to um amazon sells little um press kit things to it but literally just squeeze it and make like a little triangle and set it somewhere and let it dry and it will burn and you can add oils i would do the research to make sure that oil can burn without like affecting you but you can add oil to it and it's as simple as that and for some reason i always thought it was more complicated now if you are going to go down that route i would suggest an a type of resin and what that resin does you can even use pine sap um but what that resin does true enough though pine sap and most resins are extremely like flammable but it helps bind them together and it also can add more sense to them and then so say you wanted to make one to help with meditation of course, mugwort, if you can use it or if you can get your hands on it. But there are a lot of basic herbs that also, and like I've always said, when you do research with herbs, don't just look at necessarily witchcraft correspondences or um, metaphysical correspondences. Start venturing out into other paths, like say, for example, what these herbs would mean in hoodoo or conjure versus what they would mean in Scott Cunningham's book. They could have completely different correspondences and uses for them. And I learned this just by starting to read about conjure and hoodoo and uh, root working. So many different correspondences. And it, it bugged me because it was like, I don't know, it was like there was a part of the own community or the magic that was hidden and cut off due to the fact that I'd never thought about it. I'd never thought about Googling what peppermint, what the correspondences of peppermint are the uses of peppermint in hoodoo or um, conjure. And with that, though, you're not using an herb for the purpose of another practice, even if it's closed. That is, in my book, that's not technically cultural appropriation. You're not using the tools. You're not calling upon the deities or invoking the energies. You're literally just using the meaning of why they use it in their practice. And that's it. And like the book that I'm reading, because um, y'all know me, I'm jumping from book to book. Where's it at? Ah. In this one right here, uh, there's a chapter in it, which I'd never thought about it. But he... Uh, it, when it comes to conjure, as much as I try to stay away from it, there is the huge kind of race thing when it comes to like white, black, darker skin. Um, I use rice water for my hair. I had no idea you could use it in your practice. I'm allergic to incense, so that is awesome info. Oh, sweet. And I may look up what rice water does for hair. Um... But in this one, he's like a perfect example of misunderstandings due to like pop culture and stuff like that was this couple had walked in one of the shops because he also like makes oils and stuff um, and picked up a oil to keep the cops away or hide from the cops. And they asked in a very kind of racist way, oh, well, we know what that's for. And he explained to them, he goes, but have you ever wondered why that would need to be made and they're like no and he goes well have you ever thought of what it would be like of you just going out in public and possibly getting stopped or pulled over he goes that's why and it kind of blew my mind because i'd never thought about that because with me i've never been profiled on necessarily the way that i look 
but our skin color, but the way that I've dressed, I had, especially in Alabama. Me walking in, wearing all black, colored hair, eyeliner, I literally, depending on the store that I walked in, was followed through the entire store. I don't know why. I guess I looked like I was just going to steal something. But also with that, though, some of the conjure oils, conjure itself is not a closed practice due to the fact it is made up of multiple different types of practices and cultures who willingly gave out that information to teach and educate people. Hoodoo, same, but hoodoo is almost like voodoo. There are two types. There is traditional hoodoo and traditional voodoo. As far as I know, those are closed as in the, as in you have to be a, initiated in by somebody who has been officially initiated creole voodoo and creole conjure well creole voodoo which is where america not americanized creole i guess conjure and is also where hoodoo came from they kind of formed out of that and they are not a closed practice and that was spoken to me or i learned that from someone who lives in new orleans uh, she is part of that culture as well. Um, she was raised in it. And I believe she actually has ancestors that are also in it. So, and that's the one misconception. A lot of these people that are going around throwing out these words, they're not part of that path, which is what's been bugging me. How can you tell other people that you cannot practice this path if you yourself don't even practice it? Makes no sense. Um... But yeah, and then once I start reading this book, I will share some of the things that are in here because uh, I think I had somebody ask me on TikTok, actually. Uh, Hi, John Charm. Hi, John Root is amazing. Uh, with the witches trade that I do with um, Vixen, Vixen, or I think I said that right. Um, the one who sent me the uh, both packages with the Vespa powder in it and the selenite wand or the selenite, or sasphire wand. Um, she also got me one of the oils off of Amazon, which is uh, John the Conqueror. I think it's John the Conqueror, or is it High Root? One or the other, but I love that company because those oils, the way that they're made, they can be added to other oils, they can be added to candles, or they can literally just be put on you. And that particular one, I've actually mixed with two other oils that I have that I carry with me in my bag, to like it's kind of an all in one i can use it for protection if i wanted to i could use it to um change my luck or make me a little bit to where luck kind of comes my way um it just depends on it but these oils themselves those oils uh from root of i think it's art of root their oils are slightly different because it's not just it's the herb but they also have different slightly oils mixed in with it to get that scent they also, uh, the ones that I've gotten so far smell lovely, but to make a oil itself, it's not really that difficult. As long as you can get your hands on the herb or root, it's not, and it's not like making a tincture. You're not trying to extract it. You're just cr trying to make it blend. Now, if you ever go into making tinctures, anything that is considered a bark or a root, you're going to need 99 to 100% grain alcohol, basically Everclear. Uh, you can do it with water. It will take a little bit longer, but you can. And depending on who you ask, they're going to tell you fresh or dry is better. I've always heard that dry herbs are actually better to extract what you're trying to extract versus uh, fresh herbs. But I know a lot of recipes. There's one um, for anyone who drinks. There is. Uh, I got it from the Goody Spell Book, which I've altered it to fit me and to add more to it it's a alcohol relief and it works like it's a hangover relief and it works just due to the herbs that it has in it and how they affect the stomach and the body and i never really because i know i used to make tinctures i haven't really made them in a while i'm working on a cbd one well cbd delta 8 one but um oils themselves all you need is a carrying oil whether that's grapeseed oil, sunflower seed oil, olive oil, and then you get the root or the plants that you're trying to use, make sure you are not allergic to them before you put them on your skin. And you basically just put them in that oil. 
Now, there are people that will wait for a specific time to invoke a planetary energy with that. There are certain people that will wait for a specific moon phase on a specific date, and they'll just break that down more and more. You don't have to, though. It all depends on your practice. But you get those oils, you get the herbs, you sink them in there. It depends on if, you know, some of them may not actually have a smell to them, but the essence of that plant and the reason you want to use that in that oil, they will. And then you have oils that you can bless your candles with, dress your candles with, such and such, um, blessing charms, jewelry, you name it, you can use it. Um, feeding a mojo bag, which is also not culture appropriating, um... You know, feeding a honey jars, multiple different things that you can use these oils for. And that's one of the reasons I'm so all over the place was because I've realized that it's almost like saying witchcraft is a closed practice. Due to the fact that, at least how I was, I could only find Wicca. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it. But the way that they teach, I had that in my mindset. That the only way that I could do this was this way. And once I started broadening my ranges and kind of exploring other paths, I realized that there are so many different uses for basic things that witches use in their practice every single day that I had never thought of of how to use it. For example, like I said in my live when I was walking towards the road, most flowers, wildflowers that grow on the side of a road, if they are colored, their number one thing would be protection. And the reason that is, is because way back then when we still used horse and buggies, they knew that if they saw those flowers, it was the end of the road. And going off of that path could possibly kill them, injure their horse, damage the wagon. So that's where some of these, like uh, Blue Vervain, for example, that's where that came from. That's why Blue Vervain stands for protection. It has multiple other um, properties as well, and it can be brewed in a tea, but that's where that came from. And that's where most, all of the correspondences to these herbs that we're using in practices, literally that's where it came from. It was, okay, well, it's a vine. What do vines represent? Strength. You can tie stuff together. You can bind stuff together. But it's strength. It's longevity. It's growth. And it was just because those were like that. I mean, they somebody looked at one and was like, ah, oh, so the ivy grows up like this. It's got to have strength. There's a lot to it. Bam. Thus, you have the correspondence to that. Um, and multiple other ones, it, that they did the same thing. They looked at it and like, okay, well, this and this and this. I could be wrong with some of those herbs, but that's how I look at it. Um, that's why I use a lot of the stuff outside. I kind of call every living thing plant and herb, even though it's really not. I just don't know another word for it. Um, but it's worked for my practice. Now, I won't go out and pick something and then eat it. Not without knowing that that is for sure the um, plant. So, the recipe that I'm going to go over is nettle paste uh, pesto. And the nettle plant is the one that's growing everywhere right now. And it's like, I'm going to share a picture of it. But um, I think it's called purple dead nettle. There is one other lookalike, but the one other lookalike is also edible. Um, but this is the recipe. Two cups of fresh nettle. Sorry about the banging. My next door neighbor is working on his little sheep house or house for his sheeps. Um, or goats. Yeah, I think they're goats. Um, two cups fresh nettle. Four cloves of garlic. One fourth teaspoon of salt. One half cup of olive oil, one half cup of, or a half a cup of olive oil, a half a cup of walnuts or pine nuts, and one and a half cups of Parm uh, Parmesan cheese. In my option, your internet is what makes the herbs, your intention is what makes the herbs and oils as they represent the task at hand, regardless of the origin of practice. Actually, I agree with that a hundred percent. It really does with that. Um... Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Sorry, I had to think about that. Um, fill a large pot halfway with water. Once the water boils, put the nettle in the pot. Now, before you do this, I would suggest, like, washing or possibly soaking nettle um, in, like, cold water or vinegar or something like that to make sure there are no bugs or little extra things on it that you don't want. Um... 
Let's see. Once the water boils, put the nettle in the pot, either with tongs or gloved hands. Yeah, don't burn yourself, please. Push it down with a spoon so that they submerge in boiling water. Only leave them in the water for one minute. That's all it takes to remove the sting. Remove them with a slotted spoon, tongs, or colander. Since you might want to save the water for drinking later, it makes a very nutritious tea. You can even water your plants with it once it has cooled. Put garlic, salt, olive oil, and drained nettle into a food processor and chop everything up. Add walnuts and parmesan. Process them until everything is smooth. Peso usually calls for pine nuts, but I find them too expensive. Make about It makes about five cups. Serve the pesto with Pesto with paste or rice or on special crackers or pizza. So there you go. There's a very interesting, and I'll post this uh, after this as well because it has the creator's name with it as well. Um, so there you go. There's you a very interesting recipe. Um, and then I'm going to pick an herb really quick and then pick a card from the deck like I normally do. Um, tomorrow, I don't know if I'll go live at the normal time, or even if I will go live, just due to the fact that I have that interview tomorrow, um, with the guy who wrote this. Super excited about that. Um, and then I will let y'all know when I'm going to be interviewing the traditional witch as well. Um, so, let's see what we're going to pick today. There we go. That's one I haven't done. Orange. Uh, the folk name is love fruit. The gender is masculine, or the energy behind it is masculine. The uh, It's ruled by the sun, and the element is fire. It, you can use it for love, divination, luck, and money. Will that be on here? or on Spotify? It'll be on uh, Spotify. Well, yeah, Spotify and uh, Anchor. And then I'm hoping to get back to posting on CastBox, but I'm not for sure on that one. Um, the dried pills and seeds are added to love satchels, and the flower to those satchels designed to lead the wedding bliss. The fresh or dried blossoms added to the bath make the bath more attractive. Um, when you eat an orange, think of a question you want answered. It must be a yes or no question. Count the seeds in the orange. If there is an even number, the answer is no. If it's odd, the answer is yes. I didn't even know that one. Uh, orange peel is added to prosperity powder, incense, and mixtures. And the Chinese have long considered oranges symbols of luck and good fortune. Orange juice is drunk in rituals and places of wine. Did not know that either. An infusion of orange pills drunk... An infusion of orange pills... Drunk will guard against later drunkness while the water distilled from orange flowers is added to love and lust potions and baths. I did not know that either. I did a money spell this morning and it's been nonstop at the store. Oh, that's kind of awesome. I mean, it's awesome that it's been nonstop, but I also understand about the busyness. Um,. I'm actually kind of blown away right now. I did not know that apparently boiling orange pills and drinking it could um, prevent drunkness. Or No, an infusion of orange pills. Alrighty then. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay. Let's see what the card has in store for us. Hello. I also have to find a more comfortable way of sitting because my knees are killing me right now. Which eventually I'm going to have a better setup than this. But right now this is the best lighting that we have in the house. Didn't we get you yesterday? No, we did not. We got the, uh, I think it was the daughter of, did we get the daughter of pentagrams, yes, pentacles yesterday?
Alright. Well, that's weird. I'm gonna reshuffle again, because we just got the Daughter of Pentagrams. Which was the same card that we got yesterday. But it fell out. Which I normally don't do that anyway, so... Anyways, let's see. Oh, shit. Five of Pentagrams. Let's see what that's about. I think I already know what this card's about. Sadness, worry, and illness. The Five of Pentagrams is a card of hard times. It may come in a form of illness, job loss, financial trouble, or rejection. Above all this, there will be worry, so much worry. The anxiety is a conceptive and damaging. You must find a way to quiet the mind during difficult times. Rely on meditation and visualization to find peace. Let's draw another one. Four of Wands. I think it's Wands. Yep, Four of Wands. Completion and celebration. You've done it. The Four of Wands is a card of completion. Your labors have been steady and strong, and the harvest will be plentiful. In other words, it's time to party. There might be an upcoming event to mark the occasion, a graduation, wedding, or celebration of some kind. So enjoy yourself and those you love. This is an exciting and prosperous time. So what I'm gathering from that is this right here may be currently what you're going through, but this right here is going to be the outcome. It's going to be a time of celebration, or at least for today. But I'm still learning how to read these, um, which I need to start practicing a little bit more. But yeah, that's going to be it. Um, I still do have to. I had trouble getting to my uh, Amazon account yesterday, but I finally got in. So I will be um, updating that list and resharing it. That way, everybody has a uh, list of books. Um and then, I think that was it that I wanted to say. Um, I did post a episode. I did an episode, a quick episode on my podcast. Um, but it just basically was just an update and then a couple of words of wisdom that basically I say on here. Uh, but yeah. But yeah, if y'all would, let me know on what videos or TikToks y'all would like to see of mine. Just shoot me a message. Um, that way I know which ones to grab and kind of upload. Um and yeah i think that's going to be it i will post the um picture of nettle let me write that down the picture of nettle that i was talking about um i have not forgot about the youtube video or the list of youtube videos of like the uh pagan witchy music that i listen to i'm still in the process of think of uh, doing those you're welcome anytime But, yeah. And I didn't get any mail today, so I will not be walking you too. Um, but, yeah. Until then, I will all see y'all later. I hope y'all are all having a magical Wednesday. Um, oh, I did want to let everybody know. Mark your calendars. I do have to do some research to see if we'll be able to visibly see it. March 23rd, or April 23rd, there's going to be a meteor shower that I believe will be visible here in the United States. Um, so, yeah. There's that, and I'll talk about that more the next time I do a live. But anyways, until then, I hope you're all having a great day, great week. You're all magical, and until then, peace.